let's begin by considering the effects of a variation in inlet pressure. For our discussion, consider that the following compressor draws atmospheric air through an inlet filter, as seen here. The rated compressor inlet pressure is 14.5 psi. The discharge pressure in this case is 20.6 psi. When the filter becomes dirty, the inlet pressure at the compressor flange drops to 14.2 psi. What is the effect on discharge pressure and shaft horsepower at the rated inlet volume flow? Now, for a centrifugal compressor, discharge pressure is related to the adiabatic head according to the following equation. Here, Z1 is the gas inlet compressibility, R is the gas constant, T1 the gas inlet temperature, K is the ratio of specific heats, and RP is the pressure ratio of the gas, that is, the discharge pressure divided by the inlet pressure. In this equation, subscript 1 refers to the compressor inlet, or the compressor suction. Now, recall, for a given inlet volume flow at a given rotational speed, the head output is constant. And in our case, because there is no change in the other inlet conditions, the pressure ratio does not vary. Therefore, the pressure ratio for the clean condition equals the pressure ratio for the dirty condition. Now, the pressure ratio for the clean condition is equal to 20.6, the discharge pressure, divided by 14.5 when the air filter is clean. And this gives 1.42 as a pressure ratio. The pressure ratio for the dirty condition is equal to P2, the unknown discharge pressure, divided by 14.2, which corresponds to the inlet pressure when the air filter is dirty. So, as you can see here, P2 is equal to 1.42 times 14.2. This gives 20.2 as a new discharge pressure for the dirty filter. So, you can see here that for a centrifugal compressor, a decrease in the inlet pressure will result in a decrease in the discharge pressure. Okay. Now, to assess the effects of a variation in the inlet pressure, let's first refer back to the volume flow equation. Rearranging it will give the following new equation. Now, comparing this equation with the shaft horsepower equation that we have seen in the previous video, we find that shaft horsepower is proportional to weight flow or inlet pressure, as seen here. Now, before to move on, a quick comment here. This last equation is not strictly valid. Why is that? Because shaft horsepower is composed of gas horsepower and mechanical losses, as you can see here. As a rule of thumb for centrifugal compressors, the mechanical losses are approximately constant for a given speed, but are in general a small part of the total horsepower. Therefore, ignoring mechanical losses will usually yield a useful approximation in our procedures. Now, starting from this general horsepower equation, we can write the equations corresponding to the clean and dirty condition, as seen here. Dividing SHP dirty by SHP clean will yield the following useful relationship. As you can see here, the shaft horsepower is proportional to the inlet pressure. Now, substituting for P dirty and P clean, we can see that a decrease in inlet pressure will result in a decrease in power requirement. Ok, now before to move on, some points to remember. First, recall that the head produced by an impeller for a given rotational speed and a given inlet flow is a constant. 
Second, remember, if there is only a change in the inlet pressure, then the pressure ratio does not vary. Finally, keep in mind the following useful relationship describing the effects of a variation in inlet pressure on shaft horsepower. Ok, in this example, we have ignored the effects of system resistance downstream of the compressor discharge flange. For many applications, system resistance is small when compared to the total pressure requirements of the compressor and will therefore have minimal effect on the analysis. In some applications, however, system resistance effects are large and these will actually define the compressor operation. We can view system resistance as the sum of piping and system losses and utility pressure drops. These should not be thought of as losses. As the volume flow through the system increases, frictional losses increase and require a higher pressure at the discharge of the compressor to be overcome. The following figure shows a typical system resistance line superimposed on two compressor performance curves. The solid curve that you can see here represents rated inlet conditions. Recall this is the curve that is provided by the manufacturer of the compressor. The dashed curve that you can see here shows the effects of a reduction in inlet pressure only. Point A that you can see here, which is given by the intersection of the system resistance curve and the rated inlet condition curve, is the rated operating point. In this example, we have assumed constant inlet volume flow and therefore calculated the discharge pressure at point C. The power requirement calculated previously using the following formula was also for operation at point C. If the compressor in our example operated with system resistance, it would search its new performance curve, so the dashed line, until it intersected system requirement. The result would be operation at point B as highlighted here. Therefore, as you can see from this figure, the inlet volume flow would be somewhat less than rated and the discharge pressure would be slightly higher than calculated. Now, at this stage, don't worry if some of the concepts highlighted here are not clear for you. We will demystify them in the next couple of videos. In this video, we will examine the effects of a variation in inlet temperature. So let's assume that the inlet temperature drops from 90 degrees Fahrenheit to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, while other inlet conditions remain at rated values. So what's the effect on discharge pressure and shaft horsepower for our compressor at the rated inlet volume flow? Now, rearranging the adiabatic head equation yields the following in terms of pressure ratio. This equation indicates that a change in inlet temperature inversely affects the pressure ratio. So, for a change in inlet temperature only, we can write the following for the rated inlet temperature and for the new inlet temperature. Now, dividing the second equation by the first equation will yield the following. Rearranging this expression, as you can see here, will give the following useful relationship. Solving this equation for the new pressure ratio, we get the following. And since the new pressure ratio is equal to P2 the unknown new discharge pressure divided by P1 which is unchanged, then the new discharge pressure can be expressed as follows. Now, substituting for the known values, 
we then have the following. So, as you can see here, reducing the inlet temperature will increase the discharge pressure. Ok, let's now examine the effect of the reduction in inlet temperature on shaft horsepower. Referring back to the equation for the shaft horsepower, without taking into account the mechanical losses, we find that shaft horsepower is inversely proportional to inlet temperature. So, we can derive the following useful relationship. As you can see here, a decrease in the inlet temperature will result in an increase in the shaft horsepower. Here again, keep in mind we have neglected the effects of system resistance. Where system resistance prevails, we may refer to the following figure. Here, the solid curve represents the compressor performance for the rated inlet conditions. The dashed curve that you can see here represents a drop in inlet temperature with all other inlet conditions remaining at the rated values. Point A that you can see here, given by the intersection of the system resistance curve and the rated inlet condition curve, is the compressor rated point. In our last example, we consider it a constant inlet volume flow. Therefore, we calculated the performance at point C as depicted here. But in reality, since our compressor is operating with system resistance, then our compressor will search its new performance curve until it reaches point B, as depicted here, at its intersection with the system resistance line. In this case, inlet flow will be somewhat higher than rated, and discharge pressure slightly lower than calculated. Ok, at this stage, what I want you to understand and to keep in mind is that a drop in inlet pressure has the net result of lowering the discharge pressure curve of your compressor, while a drop in inlet temperature results in raising the curve. From this, we can deduce that we can obtain rated performance on cold days by suction throttling of the inlet pressure. To better illustrate this concept, let's have a look at the following example. Here, a centrifugal compressor is working with an inlet temperature at 90 degrees Fahrenheit and an inlet pressure at 14.5 psi. The discharge pressure in this case is 20 psi. On cold days, the inlet temperature will drop to minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit. As a result, and as we have seen previously, this will increase the discharge pressure up to 23 psi. So, to bring the discharge pressure back to 20 psi, we can use the suction throttling method. In fact, reducing the opening of the control valve placed at the section of the compressor will decrease the inlet pressure. And this, as a result, will decrease the discharge pressure and brings it back to 20 psi. This is the concept of suction throttling for centrifugal compressors. So, keep in mind, on cold days, you can obtain rated performance by suction throttling of the inlet pressure. It is also possible to obtain the same result by lowering the speed on variable speed drives. This will be covered in detail in a later video. For now, keep in mind suction throttling also lowers the power requirement. Recall, horsepower is directly proportional to inlet pressure as seen in the previous video. Now, in this discussion, we are trying to analyze each variable independently. 
Therefore, we have not taken into account the change in water vapor content of the air due to the change in inlet temperature. For the rated conditions, at 90 degrees Fahrenheit, the molecular weight of the air is 28.7 gram per mole. When the inlet temperature changes to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, the molecular weight becomes 28.9. In the next video, we will consider the effects of changes in the gas molecular weight.